I imagine uh, you have been bombarded with requests for folks that have been stuck in the United States that want to go back to India. And of course, there are people in India that want to go back to their home countries. Talk about how this whole uh, initiative culminated and your involvement specifically in the Bay Area. Yeah, you see, uh, this is a, a great uh, initiative. Uh, I feel that uh, when this uh, COVID-19 pandemic has uh, really become a global uh, uh, problem and global issue, and there are uh, uh, several Indians who are stranded outside the country. In the United States, I, while I do not uh, particularly say that stranded because there's a huge Indian uh, diaspora here, including the uh, uh, non-resident Indians, there's the Indian Indians and the American Indians, uh, so uh, who keep on visiting, there are a lot of visitors. So at this point in time, when uh, there's uh, a demand that uh, people wanted to go back uh, for several reasons, there were many who uh, were travelers who were stranded here, and there were students, the educational institutions closed. But more importantly, there are people who wanted to attend family emergencies and medical emergencies. So it is a decision which has to be taken because it is not only about the United States, but globally, you have uh, uh, several, several Indians, especially in the Gulf and other countries who also had to be evacuated. So this is actually the largest evacuation exercise that has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, initiated uh, by the government of India. And so far as the United States is concerned, this is in the phase one. The first flight goes out in another couple of hours at 11 p.m. from San Francisco. So it is appropriate that the first flight goes out of San Francisco as uh, the West Coast, the Bay Area, California, it has the largest uh, population. Uh, I mean, the, uh, if you see the Indian diaspora, it's 1.5 million. But this, at this point, we are talking about uh, the 400,000 non-resident Indians, the Indian nationals, because in the first phase, the Indian nationals are getting uh, evacuated. But uh, total in the United States, you have 40,000 uh, who have registered. Uh, and uh, in the, around 40,000 and in San Francisco under our council's jurisdiction, it is 10,000. But in the first flight today, it's a going to be a full flight, which is going to Mumbai and Hyderabad and total 225 people uh, will be on board. Uh, tell me about what precautions have been taken by, by you and your staff and by, by the airlines and the aircraft to make sure everybody's transported safely. See, well, we have a standard operating protocol in place. Uh, while I'm standing here right in the uh, in San Francisco uh, International Airport and uh, at the Air India counter, uh, I will, if I uh, turn around, I mean, you could see that uh, almost the check-in is almost complete and uh, these are the Air India counters. But here, what we have is first when the people, I'll, I'll actually tell you how the process uh, works. Uh, when anybody comes into the airport, they first uh, they have to go to the, for the health screening. And then uh, uh, as soon as uh, they are cleared, a stamp is pasted on their passport and then only they are checked in. So all the 25, 225 passengers, the health screening is now over. And uh, the last uh, check-in is uh, about to, the check-in is also about to be completed. So mask uh, and uh, some uh, uh, protection and some hygiene, which is uh, now uh, determined that is uh, totally exercised here and also in the flight. So it is a minimum service uh, will be rendered so that there is not much of interaction, but mind you, this is a long haul flight. So you cannot possibly uh, call it a uh, no service. So the free meals are being provided, but uh, there will be pre-packed, one hot meal, and then, uh, uh, you know, the two other meals will be packed meals. So all these arrangements have been configured and worked out. Uh, but people are generally very happy. And I must tell you that last three, four days, uh, we have been working 24-7, the consulate team, the embassy team in D.C., and uh, our uh, you know, counterparts in India to receive the state governments. Everybody on arrival will be going through 14 days of mandatory quarantine. So they're prepared for it. The hotels have been taken. Uh, all those people who pay a little more, they have better 
uh, hotel, I mean, who can pay a little more, but then we have negotiated uh, and the hotels are also giving a very reasonable rate for everything with the meals and other things. So it's a, it's a massive exercise. I mean, it, uh, actually the total uh, evacuation, it's uh, difficult to estimate the number, but it will be, I feel it will be around uh, 200,000 or even more. So some of the numbers uh, coming out of India the last few days saying there were there were about 15,000 people uh, on these flights. Is that the case or is there many more? There are uh, ships which have been pressed into service. There are a huge uh, evacuation which is taking place from the Gulf uh, by naval ships. And uh, uh, But even only flights are much more. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, much larger than the, uh, if you say globally, but there have been other places where it's only limited to one area, like, uh, for example, from Kuwait, Iraq, and then earlier Libya. But this is a global evacuation from all over the world. You know, it's a very difficult situation also. It is not like because we have to, there are certain health protocols, there are concerns. How do you maintain social distancing? I mean, the, these are the things which have to be enforced. So, of course... Uh, Everybody is uh, on a mask and uh, there are several precautions that are taken and our medical screening and only asymptomatic uh, passengers are allowed to travel. So uh, uh, the screening is done twice, uh, once before check-in and once before boarding so that uh, nobody with even the slightest of symptom is allowed to board. So they're getting a temperature check uh, and yes. they must wear a mask? Uh, thermal screening and uh, then uh, for physical symptoms. Only people with compelling circumstances are allowed to take the flight. Uh, compelling circumstances, because you see, there's so many Indians all over the world. So it is, uh, we have to really see that who genuinely has to go back. There are people with uh, really pressing difficulties. So they have to be accommodated. So what we have done is we divided them in seven categories, all those who register. And in every category, on the basis, basis of a, a transparent system of computerized random sampling, uh, random selection, the uh, people uh, who are lucky, I mean, they get it in the first flight. Of course, I mean, there was so much of demand for the first flight, but obviously uh, only 225 could make it. But having said that, certain medical emergency, some death cases had to be accommodated. So... There's, uh, uh, so that uh, we had to work on that. And there was uh, several people who just came there on standby. And uh, it actually uh, is a little sad to see that we couldn't accommodate everybody. So some are going back. But we'll, uh, we have promised them anybody who has come here as standby will accommodate in the next flight. So they will be definitely, I mean, first they will be accommodated and then the rest will be taken out by the selection process. Tell me about the amount of flights. So is there going to be one flight daily, one flight a week? How, how is this process going? See, the, this week, uh, we have seven flights out of the United States. The first of the flights is actually going from San Francisco. And I always feel that uh, that's the right thing to do. And uh, then uh, we have uh, flights going from uh, Newark, uh, from JFK, uh, 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 Chicago, and uh, also from Washington, D.C. So uh, there will be seven flights this week under phase one, and then phase two will happen, and uh, then there will be uh, a number of flights yet to be determined. So uh, there will be several flights, uh, yeah, coming. But uh, for the, in the first phase, only the Indian nationals have been uh, taken on board. And is the government of India subsidizing the cost of this flight, or people uh, contributing? Uh, see, uh, uh, this is a... This is a commercial operation. I mean, Air India is uh, uh, coming and uh, they are operating this flight. The flight is coming virtually empty from India and is going back. So people are paying actually slightly more than the, it's not uh, for double. I mean, which uh, Air India uh, came empty, so uh, only to take them. I mean, almost empty because some tickets were sold, some were returning to the United States. But then uh, uh, it's not exactly, uh, not double, but uh, more than uh, uh, the, what uh, the normal uh, single way fare is. So it's not uh, free. And I also feel, why should it be free? I mean, it's, uh, uh, you have to pay to go back because this is a, a different, uh, it's not a distress, uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, that uh, people, if, if the, but there are people who are finding difficulty in paying. So 
that was getting subsidized for example from gulf uh, the 15000 but then it is uh, it will be not right to call that these flights are subsidized so this part of the thing has been picked up uh, by the government but uh, these are uh, commercial operations by special flights commercially operated by air india uh, and share with us your perspective on how the indian government is handling this because obviously so many people in the diaspora are concerned about what's going on in india uh, it seems india took this very seriously I mean, keeping 1.3 billion people uh, locked down for this extended period of time is unprecedented. Uh, and obviously, testing is not at the level that we have in the United States, but it does seem that shelter in place has helped quell some of the spread. Uh, give us your thoughts of, of what you're hearing uh, from the inside about the Indian response and the impact of COVID-19 within the Indian state. See, the Prime Minister took a very uh, bold decision. I mean, it's a very strong decision you have to take to lock down the country. And at the same time, there's uh, two things which is said. I mean, you have to, life is important. At the same time, livelihood is important. Now, this is matching life and livelihood is actually a challenge. And there's uh, initially when this lockdown happened, I mean, there was this difficulty with the migrant population. So, which had to be managed. And then... Uh, the states have really, really now taken the lead. And uh, there are many states which are doing very well. But then the point is now how long uh, can uh, you know, some uh, places have to open? So now selectively, the uh, places have been divided into red zone, orange zone. And uh, so there's, it's work in progress. But at the same time, there is uh, this sense setting in uh, that, uh, you know, you have to... Uh, it, won't be business as usual, but at the same time, it has to have business as to return in some form or the other. So basically, uh, you have to have a different, uh, you know, for example, the mask becomes the new normal. So, uh, I mean, it's, uh, you have to uh, call it a fashion statement now, I mean, putting on a mask. So, uh, so we have to live with it. So now India has so far handled it very well, but having said that, there has to be enough discipline to see that we get through this phase.